dedicated 10 minutes for questions. So uh, do we have any questions from the group to begin with? Yes, Alan. Doctor, is there a trade uh, from the UAE in semen to other countries? As I understand Australia, the import, importation is banned. And if so, what are the disease risks for our ban? Um, yes, as I say, because our freezing semen isn't particularly good at this stage, um, we haven't come to the point of actually trying to export it. Uh, there would be disease control. You'd obviously have to do a lot of um, work on the animals that you're collecting the semen from. Um, there's things like brucellosis and all that sort of problems that we get. So you would have to make sure that it's free of all those diseases before you could export it. But because we're still in our infancy of trying to free semen and get acceptable pregnancy rates from frozen semen, we haven't even started the export business yet. Lulu, thanks, that was great. Uh, using an AV with the males, how often can you milk once a day, once a week, <laughs> once every hour? Oh, I wish. Can they back up? <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, it, yeah, that's a good question. And again, it's very variable between males. We usually find once a day maximum, and probably after two days, they need a rest. So, you know, the libido of the males is not great, and the semen quality will go down if you regularly collect from them. So, yeah, so uh, everything goes down, volume goes down, libido goes down, they get less interested. Um, we even, you know, collecting once a week, we, we would normally say collect from our males twice a week, and that's on a five day working week, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> We've tried all sorts of things. <laughs> Thank you very much. It was uh, very interesting and thought-provoking of, of the future of the industry, but I was wondering on a more practical level for where we're at right now, um, you're talking about libido for both male and female for ovulating. Have you found any supplement, supplementation or anything specific that you're feeding to your males or the females nutrition-wise to get better pregnancy rates and better performance out of the males? Um, yeah, no, that's an interesting thought as well. I mean, we certainly give all our males a mineral supplement. And we've been working with, as um, Rafat was talking earlier, about the vitamin E and selenium. In Dubai in particular, we find vitamin E and selenium low. So that, that is the supplement we use. The males do get a, a mixture of uh, concentrate. Um, I don't know exactly what the formulation of that is in relation to crude protein and metabolizable energy and that sort of thing. But the females don't get that. They get a, a limited amount when they come into the lab to entice them in and realize that they're coming in for a bit of fun rather than anything nasty. Um, we, they do get fed when they come into the lab, but again, it's not a regular amount per day. But we do give the supplement, vitamin E and selenium, we do find important, and the mineral supplement which they have in the pen. So, I mean, more work is needed for the nutritional benefits in direct relationship to the reproduction. But because we're doing lots of different things to our camels, we're stimulating them, we're inseminating fresh or frozen semen, we're using fresh or frozen embryos, we can't always say their reduction in fertility or whatever is due to the feed. It might be due to the treatment we're giving them and everything else. And you really need to have a separate herd of animals that you could just defer the, you know, do through the feeding and then mate them and see if they get more pregnant or not. Um, but that, that's work that needs to be done. Definitely we found with supplementation it's sort of a, a, a given as Lulu said but also with the males sometimes when their libido is down or if they're coming into or off rut and you want them to, to be interested there are some um, injectable anabolics that you can, that you can use. Um, I, don't have the names of them but there are some injections proven wise you can give them a testosterone injection but it'll only get them excited for literally a few hours and and not enough to to really give a, a good um, a good mating result uh, and the other one I haven't used but it is there is something out there and I'm yeah a GnRH and a and or an um, anabolic as well but you can use either of those GnRH again has variable results so but there there are manipulations Doug well no there's a product SARMS SARMS 
Sam, again, Doug and I, we don't know. I just thought I'd put it out there. There is something there called Sam's. Alex Stinson um, has, has told us about it. We haven't used it, but just in case anyone else is having those problems with their bulls, there's something out there. So just remember that. You can, you, we can alter that. Yeah, no, I think that's true. I think the only thing with GNRH you have to be a bit careful with is you don't downregulate them. If you give too much, then you can go do the opposite and downregulate the animals. And then that can take some time for them to come back into um, rut again. Yep. Um, I'm just questioning. I may have heard wrong earlier, but you stated that um, while camels are lactating, they can't get pregnant. Could you elaborate a little bit more on why well, that is? Well, it's not that they can't get pregnant. You can always get a camel pregnant if you pump her full of hormones. Um, it's just that whilst they're lactating, whilst they've got a calf at foot, their follicular wave pattern gets slower the follicles don't develop so well. Um, so the routine in Dubai is in general on the breeding farms is that they don't even try and breed them uh, when they're lactating. They wean the calf about nine, ten months and then they'll bring the female back in um, on the next season. Yeah. Would you say that having a female camel in calf while lactating can significantly like reduce milk production? Yeah, when a camel gets pregnant, and again Peter's done a lot of work on this so it's a shame he's not here, the milk production goes down. Uh, much quicker than it does in cattle. I think it's after like three, four months when she's pregnant, the milk production then goes down, which is why they, you know, it's, if you want to milk your camels, then you don't want to get them pregnant. Yeah, okay, thank you. Uh, <coughs> it's working. Uh, Lulu, an observation. Um, we, there's, a, there's been a, um, a sort of an assumption in Australia for many, many years that you need one bull per about 50 cows in a breeding herd. And certainly, uh, in my experience, that's what we had. Um, and what we found was that 80% uh, of our calves would, would calve uh, all within sort of two or three days of each other. And have you got a comment to make on that in terms of reconciling that with the need for a bull to have a rest after two ejaculates? Like, how does that work? How's that, how's that happening, that they're obviously all getting pregnant at the same time? Maybe it's not obvious. Yeah, I think maybe in the, the wild, the, the camel knows when the female's ready. Um, and maybe, as I said, when you, in that oestrous behaviour sign, we might think the female isn't ready, or she's chasing around and he's chasing her, but when we um, examined her, we found that she was the one with the right follicle. So the male certainly knows when females are pregnant, and they, I think they do say in the wild they can mate up to four or five times a day. Um, but we tend to find that because I suppose we are using our animals, especially when they're collecting semen, they're much under much more stress than natural breeding when they just do it when they feel like it. Um, and also gestation lengths can differ. They might all get born at the same time, but that's not necessarily mean they've all been mated on the same day. You know, some gestation periods are 12 and a half months, some might be 13 and a half months. So there's still that time span to think about, um, which is probably the main reason why um, they're all calving around the same time. It's more, more the gestation length difference than perhaps the male mating everything on the same day. All right, thank you very much. That's our time for questions. Just join me again in uh, thanking uh, Dr. Lily Skidmore for coming over. <laughs>